Coming up today on Iowa City Daily, Marcus Owen's family is staying positive through his assault, but will the suspects slip through the cracks? And students may be getting closer than they thought when coming to the UI next year. We preview Iowa football's 2016-2017 schedule. And take a look at some unsung heroes in Hawk Athletics. That and more in sports. Here with the ladies in sports, weather, and news, and with the best crew, this is Iowa City Daily. Hello and thank you for joining us. I'm Taylor Brooks. And I'm Nikki Crossway. The Marcus Owens assault has been dominating the conversation on the University of Iowa campus this week. But the Owens family is concerned that it's not dominating the Iowa City Police Department's attention. Daryl Owens lauded President Bruce Harold on Thursday for the UI's response to his nephew's assault, but expressed concern that the police department doesn't share the family's sense of urgency. The Iowa student's uncle stated, quote, we don't want to be the Iowa City Police Department's adversary and we want to work with them, but it doesn't feel that they have the same sense of urgency that we have. With only one week of classes remaining, the Owens family fears that any sus suspects will be leaving the area before an investigation is completed. The police department has been in the spotlight this week, but at least yesterday it was for something positive. Lieutenant Bill Campbell has been commander of the department's special response team for 10 years and was promoted to captain on Thursday. Iowa City employs two police captains and Campbell will serve as a cap as captain, excuse me, of administrative services after the position was vacated in March. As Campbell moves on the streets, an experimental bike lane will be moving on later this month. A project done by four graduate students in the UI College of Public Health will see a temporary bike lane placed along the curb of College Street starting on May 21st from 8 a.m. to noon. As part of a communications campaign class, the students have started a campaign called Join the Movement in order to promote a bike-friendly Iowa City. And Iowa City residents may be hopping on their bikes this weekend and heading downtown for the first annual Flyover Fashion Festival. The festival began on Thursday and will feature 24 events from then until Saturday, including concerts, fashion shows, panel discussions, and keynote speakers. Iowa City is well known for being progressive and having a keen sense of style, and organizers said that it, this is what they intended to highlight with the festival. There should be plenty of cool cats out at the fashion festival, and as animal shelters across the country are finding, there are plenty of real cats up for adoption. Maybe too many. Erin Erickson has a story. Empty cages are rare to come by at the Animal Care and Adoption Center in Iowa City. As spring arrives, staff members and volunteers are beginning to prepare for one of the craziest times of the year, the kitten season. Even though we love kittens, you know, the kitten season sends a different message to us as well. It's really stressful time in the shelter, on our resources, and on the staff and things like that because um, it means, you know, that there are a lot of other ones out there that we can't save. It's a problem that occurs every year. Millions of cats nationwide are rescued and delivered to shelters. The surplus of kittens is the result of misinformed pet owners who ignore the need to spay and neuter their cats. And if we were to do a better job to reduce, you know, in, at least in our community, reduce overpopulation, and everyone else does a job too, I think we can make a dent on those numbers. So how is the shelter solving the community's overpopulation of felines? Through foster care programs. The shelter's foster care program has been around for 10 years. Recently, the state of Iowa approved the shelter to allow 20 additional homes to foster the cats. That brings the total number of homes to 40. We wanted to take a lot of the animals that were in the, in the facility, the temporary facility, and put them in a comfortable, safe, you know, foster home just to reduce their stress. To learn more about being a foster parent, you can visit the shelter's website at icanimalshelter.org. This is Aaron Erickson. Iowa City Daily. University of Iowa housing will be stretched to its limits for the 2016-2017 school come this fall. University housing and dining officials say the incoming class is expected to be the largest Iowa has ever seen. In addition to the large class, the university is losing Quadrangle Hall and its 358 beds. As a result, 300 first-year students will be placed in expanded housing, more than double the 2015 total. A new dorm is in the process of being built, but will not be ready until the 2017-2018 school year. The new students will be placed in Dom, Stanley, Slater, and Reno. 
Now the students may have a shortage in dorm rooms, but Iowa City is not seeing a shortage in sunshine. I couldn't agree more, Nikki. Let's toss it over to Alec Giannakopoulos in the weather studio. How is the weather looking in going into finals week, Alec? Yeah, guys, looks like we're going to have a, to enjoy the sunshine while it lasts because the rain is coming on our way. Saturday, we are starting off in the mid-60s with a 40% chance of rain, and temperatures will stay the same in the afternoon at 66 degrees, but will increase to a 60% chance of thunderstorms. Going into the evening, the sky will finally clear up with only 20% chance of rain. Going into the rest of finals week Sunday, will remain cloudy with a percent chance of rain with a high of 69 and a low of 52, but there are chances of rain throughout the week, reaching up to an 80% chance of thunderstorms on Tuesday. With finals week coming to a close on Friday, we have a high of 69 and a low of 50. Only a 10% chance of rain with mostly clear skies. That's all I have in the weather studio, guys, so back to you. Thanks, Alec. With all this nice weather, it looks like spring is finally here. You know what that means, Nikki? Professional baseball is in full swing. Our own Ricardo and Cynthia gives us a look at what opening day was like in the Windy City when the weather was not so nice. It's that time of year again. America's pastime is finally underway, and Chicagoans from across the Windy City are looking forward to seeing what this season has in store. While most people come to opening day to embrace baseball fever, others come to the ballpark for rather different reasons. The wings, the beer deals, just like usually like hot guys that are like up for anything. Whether you're a Northside guy or a Southside supporter, it is no secret that baseball runs deep in the bloodlines of the Chi-Town faithful. You got the North Side and the South Side. Uh, last year, obviously, the Cubs had a very good year. They're looking to have another good year, but the Sox, in 05, they won it all. And uh, that's in our heart and always will be in our heart. We carry that with us every year. The Cubs and the White Sox have been a mainstay in Chicago for over 100 years. And every year, 82 days a year, each team has its doors open to welcome baseball fans everywhere. For some people, baseball might just be a silly sport, but for others, it's a way of life. Baseball means to me, it means family. You know, uh, my dad over here, diehard White Sox fan. My uncle here, diehard White Sox fan. Uh, it brings everyone together around the dinner table, watching the games, listening to the games. It, it's, it's life for us, really it is. W win or lose, it's, it's, it's life. This season, the White Sox are looking to recreate their 2005 magic, while the Cubs look to end their over 100-year drought. Regardless of how each team does, win, lose, or draw, they will always be backed and supported by the great people of Chicago, Illinois. Reporting from Chicago, Illinois, Ricardo Asensio, Iowa City Daily. <coughs> Well, I'll be in Chicago this summer, so hopefully the weather is a little bit better. But obviously the weather is going to be great here in Iowa City this weekend for all Hawkeye sports. Yes, Iowa baseball is away and Iowa softball is home. Let's find out more in Hawkeye sports with Dylan and Colin in the sports studio. Thanks, ladies. We lead things off talking Hawkeye basketball. But not your typical team players. These guys stay behind the scenes but play a huge role in what makes the team go. Taylor Brooks has more. While most people think it's the players in the jerseys who are the most prominent to a basketball program, there's actually hundreds of people a part of this operation, but a special seven guys who like to call themselves the managers. What's unique about Iowa managers that's different from school to school, we have seven managers that are essentially full time. They have about you know, 15 to 20 managers. You know, everyone likes to think it's special to their program. I think the program that Coach McCaffrey's put together and just kind of the environment and atmosphere, you know, it's incredible. And you get to see how a Big Ten program works. But it isn't always easy, as it's a 24-hour, seven days a week commitment. There's a lot of days that I come in and it just feels like uh, my practice. I think having a job makes it, holds you more accountable for what you do. But it's also so much fun that it's something that you love to do. It's just really a special experience that I never even thought it would have been possible. Literally, I wake up, go to class, go straight here, and then I finally am done with my day, like every single day almost. From practice to a game, being a part of this team is... I'm just like connected to the University of Iowa because it's a place that I've loved ever since I was little and I've always wanted to be a Hawk. Yeah, I've learned more with this job just in life skills than anything I've ever done. It's just so so humbling to, to know that I was a part of something that was so much bigger than myself. And there's a little room for some fun. 
I am a manager, but I'm also the number one fan of the team. <laughs> and I will not let anybody say that they're a bigger Hawkeye basketball fan than me. We are, and I don't think anyone would deny it, we are a very weird bunch. We, we speak in random accents to each other at different times. Let's go. Today, we're going to talk about managing for power. <laughs> when I describe myself to people sometimes, I think I'm the most wildest person that anyone's ever met. I'm known for singing, dancing, everything, the whole shebang. I actually got on a one-game suspension because I didn't go hard enough, I guess, for all my fans out there. So I took the Indiana game off, but uh, brought it back. I think I have everything I need in order to be a basketball manager. Reporting inside Carver Hawkeye Arena, Taylor Brooks, Daily Iowan TV Sports. Are you ready for some football? Taking a look ahead at the Iowa football schedule for 2016. The Hawks have some big games to look forward to. They will take on rival Iowa State on September 10th and host the Michigan Wolverines on November 12th. Both games are set to be under the lights at Kinnick Stadium. They kick off the season with one of their seven home games against Miami of Ohio and also host Big Ten foes Northwestern and Wisconsin in Iowa City. Iowa ends their season with a traditional Black Friday game against rival Nebraska on November 25th. The spring seasons are coming to a close for Hawkeye sports and with big implications. That that's right, Colin. Iowa men's golf is heading to the postseason. It was announced on Thursday that they earned an NCAA bid for the eighth consecutive year. Iowa baseball is currently in ninth place and needs to gain some ground to make the Big Ten tournament. With only eight teams making the postseason, the weekend series at Ohio State looks to be a big one for the Hawks. That's it for us in sports. Nikki and Taylor, back to you in the studio. One of the biggest sports scandals in recent memory is making headlines again as new information suggests that Joe Paterno knew about Jerry Sandusky molesting children nearly 20 years sooner than currently believed. A court document filed Wednesday in a lawsuit between Penn State and its former insurer shows an insurance company alleged that, quote, in 1976, a child allegedly reported to PSU's head coach, Joseph Paterno, that he, the child, was sexually molested by Jerry Sandusky. With Paterno deceased and Sandusky already serving a prison sentence, the new information won't have much of a tangible impact on the situation, but it certainly is a complicated twist and a story that would, many would like to forget. And speaking of twists, the tale of Donald Trump gets more and more interesting seemingly every day and hasn't disappointed of late. After Trump appeared to secure the Republican nomination this week, House Speaker Paul Ryan joined a growing list of GOP officials who are hesitant to support Trump. Mitt Romney, along with John McCain and both Bush presidents, have already declared they will not attend this summer's Republican convention, once again highlighting the powerful divide within the Republican Party. A jury in Los Angeles knows that it's found the man who, who killed 10 females in California over three decades ago. Lonnie David Franklin Jr. was convicted Thursday of the murders of nine women and one girl. The decision took less than two days, and jurors will now decide whether the 63-year-old should be faced the death penalty. A North Carolina woman is both receiving the lesson and serving as an example that life isn't all bad. As cancer patient Gina Short hit the jackpot and won the lottery again. <laughs> Short has been undergoing chemotherapy therapy for breast cancer for six years, but won a $1 million prize in February and can now $250,000 to that total after winning again last week. A grateful short said, quote, I have a second chance and that's what my whole life is about. That does it for us here this Friday afternoon and with Iowa City Daily, I'm Nikki Crossway. And I'm Taylor Brooks. Thanks for joining us and have an excellent day, Iowa City. Can't pick up a copy of the Daily Iowan? Are you worried about how you're going to find out about the latest news in Iowa City and the University of Iowa? Well, look no further. You can download the Daily Iowan mobile app on your iPhone for the area's best news coverage. And you can also read and watch us on your iPad. You can always find current and past Daily Iowan stories at dailyiowan.com. The Daily Iowan is now on TV, online, and in your pocket. If it happens, it's news to us.